It's about time. A lovely evening and thank you for joining us. This is Times News with me, Edita Soko. First, the headlines. Parliament adopts a fuel importation report tabled by the Natural Resources Committee. Economists call for a budget that includes programs for the creation of one million jobs. And President Lazarus Tawera pledges commitment to ensuring stability in the Sadiq region. We have these and other stories. Do stay with us. <laughs> In our first news item tonight, Parliament has adopted a fuel importation report that the Natural Resources Committee tabled in the House. One of the recommendations is that lake oil and IPG firms should be supplying fuel in the country. However, Member of Parliament for Nsanje Lalange Gladys Ganda has expressed a worry that lake oil is going bankrupt and therefore is not fit to supply fuel to the country. Ganda, who previously worked as Deputy Director of Mera and as a banker, made the remarks in Parliament on Thursday when responding to a report by the Parliamentary Natural Resources Committee. She explains. The key issue here, when you are assessing um, those companies that do supply fuel, there are two things that you need to do. You need to check that there is infrastructure capacity, that's one number one. The second one is financial capacity. Because what we are dealing with is an, an, it's an international business. It's still a national business. So if it's an international business, there are supposed to be LCs that are, that are established for the companies to supply uh, fuel. But for lake oil, I know, and it's there even in the public domain, that number one, the company is going through bankruptcy, as we speak. Number two, the company itself once failed to, to open a, a, a letter of credit for its own fuel. And also I'm aware that when I was working with Nokum, they also failed uh, when they were given a contract to renovate um, my cargo center. They failed to do that because of financial capacity. So my guidance was that uh, bear in mind that I've worked for Nokuma as well as, uh, as, well as a bank and I've transacted uh, in most of, most of these issues. I wanted to give them guidance to go back to the drawing board so that they should do a, a, a full due diligence. That's Nsanje Lalange, Member of Parliament, Gladys Ganda. The committee's chairperson, Wirani Jelenga, has however refuted the claims, stating that the committee did its research and established that the company is not going bankrupt. Now, as Minister of Finance Felix Mlusu is this Friday expected to present and lay before Parliament the 2021-2022 national budget, economists and other stakeholders have, among other issues, called for a budget that includes programs for the creation of one million jobs. They have also called for adequate funding to the Anti-Corruption Bureau, Judiciary and Agricultural Sectors, and reduction of removal of value or removal of value-added tax on essential commodities like cooking oil, maize, flour, and salt, among others. We have more in this report read by Audrey Kabalamula. The experts also expect to see how Mlusu will judge around on how to increase government revenue and increase income tax for commodities. Mlusu will be presenting his second budget under Tonsi government after his 2.3 trillion kwacha budget was marred by COVID-19, leading to challenges in revenue collection. Economist Colin Kalua, who is at Central Christian University in Blantyre, says that people expect to see how Mlusu will put in place programs for creation of one million jobs. He also said people expect the finance minister to put in place measures to minimize government borrowing from local banks. Kalua also said government should also come up with incentives to attract foreign investment as well as support for local films. Another economist, Hopkins Kawai of Catholic University, called for increased funding to the Anti-Corruption Bureau to keep corruption in the public sector. Education expert Limbani Sapato proposed that government should expand the revenue base by, among others, removing tax incentives for multinational corporations 
integrate informal businesses into the formal businesses so that more people are taxed and introducing an education levy. Secretary for the Treasury, Chansi Simwaka, said in a statement that due to COVID-19 pandemic, few stakeholders will be allowed in the National Assembly. The government has disclosed that about 400,000 households are experiencing food shortage as a result of natural disasters including dry spells, four army worm invasions and floods. Minister of Agriculture Lobin Nowe says the ministry has sourced funds to purchase potato vines, maize seeds and fertilizer for the farmers to do winter cropping. Matthew Cassandra has a report. Lowe indicated this in Parliament on Thursday as part of his response to the call by Manza Central constituency legislator Nicholas Dausi who raised concerns that people in his area might face hunger due to army worms. Dausi further elaborated that not only his area but people in other parts of the district are also facing the same threat. Speaking further to times, the minister however indicated that the country will have surplus maize as estimated a few months ago. He says as such the government will still go on with the idea of exporting the surplus because only a few districts have been affected by the natural disasters. What my minister has done is uh, to source some funding and procure uh, some uh, potato vines, maize seed and some packets of fertilizer to make sure that uh, in those areas farmers can go into uh, winter cropping in irrigation, scarce, irrigation sites as well as uh, wetlands. Some of the most affected districts are Shikwawa and Nsanje. In February this year, the ministry projected an increase of 17.5% maize harvest in the 2020-2021 season, partly due to the affordable farm input program. District commissioners and district council chief executive officers who were interdicted over the abuse of COVID-19 funds have been reinstated, Ministry of Local Government has confirmed. The controlling officers from 34 district councils have been on interdiction from February this year over failure to submit expenditure reports for part of the 6.2 billion Gwaja COVID funds allocated to their councils. Isaac Salima has the full story. On Thursday, the controlling officers have been receiving letters to return to work. Minister of Local Government spokesperson Anjoya Mwanza has confirmed that they have received the communication that the controlling officers resume work. Yes, uh, as you are aware that the council controlling officers, these ones are the district commissioners and chief executive officers for 34 councils were interdicted from exercising their powers and functions of their positions in order to pave way for investigations on failure to submit the expenditure reports and also failure to maintain proper reports for the 6.2 billion COVID-19 funds. These ones have been reinstated, which means the interdiction order which was imposed on them has been cancelled and that they should start working as soon as possible or I say immediately. Manza could however not say if this means that the controlling officers have been cleared of all allegations leveled against them, referring us to the Office of the President and Cabinet. Secretary of the Office of the President and Cabinet, Zanga Zanga Chikosi, could not pick our cause to comment on the matter. The District Commissioner for Chikwawa, Ali Piri, confirmed that he has received a letter to return to work. The interdictions have been lifted, but we should bear in mind that when we are going back to work, we are supposed to work according to the rules and regulations, the laws that apply to the workplace. And if we do things that are illegal, definitely this interdiction uh, might be reinstated. During his State of the Nation address in February this year, President Lazarus Tiaguera expressed his displeasure with how the COVID funds were managed. President Lazarus Taguera has pledged his full commitment to ensuring stability in the Sadek region. The president said this as he earlier today took part in the extraordinary double troika summit of the Southern African Development Community in Maputo, Mozambique. Taguera joined leaders of the several Southern African countries to discuss plans to tackle a growing insurgency in the north of Mozambique. 
Sadiq leaders are concerned that jihadist violence could spread throughout the region if left unchecked. President Shagwera is expected to return to Malawi tonight. Now, Presidential Advisor on Chiefs Warfare Moses Kunguyu has encouraged chiefs from the area of traditional authority Chigaru in Jigwembele headquarters in Lilangwe to inform their subjects to verify and vote during the upcoming local government by-election slated for June 29th. Kunguyu, who is also Malawi Congress Party's National Campaign Director, met 180 chiefs from the area on Wednesday. He said the government is ready to develop the area, but that this can only be possible through electing councillors who have the needs of the people at heart, hence the need to go in large numbers and vote. Lwede Mimbasa has filed this report read by Isaac Salima. While representing Wilson Makungwa as a shadow ward councillor to represent Malawi Congress Party in the by-election, the party's national campaign director, Moses Kunkuyu, reminded the chief that their duty is to always work and support the government of the day. We are having uh, elections, uh, local government elections, on the 29th of June in Chikwembe Road, after the, this follows the demise of uh, the late Jirani, who was a Malawi Congress Party councillor in this ward. So we know as Malawi Congress Party that chiefs do play a vital role in sensitizing the voters not to go and vote for a particular candidate but to go and vote and participate in the voting uh, activity itself so our coming my coming as the campaign director of the Malawi congress party is to knock on their door we are a traditional entity we believe in the role that is played by traditional leaders so we came to say we'll be coming we'll be campaigning and we have a candidate that is going to represent Malawi Congress Party in this ward. And we are uh, urging the chiefs to mobilize their people to go and participate in the voting. And also before that, go and ver uh, verify their um, names in the voters' role. And also urge the people to uh, make sure that we have a free and fair election that starts with being peaceful during the campaign. Traditional authority Chigaru said they are welcoming all aspirants in the area to share their development agendas and the campaign without fear. Later in the day, Kunkuyu welcomed Alex Chimala, who contested on a Democratic Progressive Party ticket as member of parliament for Blanta City East constituency and has now joined the MCP. Speaking to a gathering at a function that took place at the party's the region headquarters at GG in Blantyre, Shimwara said he has decided to join MCP because it is the only party where real democracy is exercised. I've joined the MCP because of its policies and the stability in the party. It's the only party with the leadership. If you check all other parties, there is no leadership. But in MCP, there is leadership. I want to work with them because it's a strong party, it's a democratic party. It can choose anybody to any position. Chakwera is not the family of Kamusu, but he was chosen to be a president. So there is democracy in MCP. Other senior party officials, such as National Executive Committee senior member, Danny Mitumbiri, Regional Chairperson Peter Simbi, Director of Elections for the South, Janet Matibu, and the brand district chairperson, George Tambo, dressed the event. You're watching the news on Times Television, TTV. We'll be back shortly. <laughs>does your toothpaste contain sage eucalyptus mirror chamomile oh that in one toothpaste yes try colgate herbal colgate herbal contains nature's best herbs and colgate's fluoride technology to give you strong teeth and healthy gums ah colgate herbal let's go colgate herbal for strong teeth and healthy gums naturally if there's one thing that all soaps do it's wash from packets to basins bathrooms to streams and everything in between. <laughs> oh, soap swash. Yes, but Protex is different. It's reinvented formula with flaxseed oil, boosts your skin's natural anti-germ defenses, 
by 10 times more, protecting you against 99.9% .9 of germs. So what keeps us healthy? Rotex! Good health starts here. Tikolole! Ungonje zila mayuniti ati enem kuyambida 200 kwa chaka vena kuposila pa menepo muta ukaya moti mwama milione ya muti enem tikolole promotion. Chakachino nikolola! Chakachino nikolola! Chakachino nikolola! Kumamuka unje zila mayuniti ni 100 kwa chaka vena kuposila hapo muti nandia mabonas wa imbida phone ni SMS kavena data pompo pompo. TNM, always with you. Welcome back to the news on Times Television, TTV. Now, traveling in Mzuzu City during peak hours has become dreadful for road users who spend a longer time than usual getting to their destinations. According to police, the traffic jams are caused largely by two things, an influx of vehicles in the city and inadequate roads. The law enforcers have now started training traffic wardens in a desperate attempt to ease congestion in the central business district and other busy places. First on Malegezo has a report. Mzulu City has two major roads, M1 and M5, with no bypass for those wishing not to go through the city when proceeding to either Nkarabe, Rumpi, Nzimba, Karonga or Chitipa. While efforts by the city council are there to construct bypass roads, for example the Mzuzu government mandated Ruinga Road, the project is moving at a slow pace. Going through the council's plans, they have recommended to the Rose Authority to turn the M1 road from around Usanga's road block to Dunduzu road block into dual carriage road to match with the current traffic. On his part, police through the road traffic department in the northern region is training civilians to become traffic wardens to help out in congestion hotspots. The initiative also comes at a time when the country has this year recorded a 37% jump in road accidents in the first quarter compared to the same period last year. Saidon Mpina is Mzuzu police station officer. In all prone accidents area, we have set a committee to work together with the traffic police and this committee is called the traffic wardens. Yeah, these are civilians but they have been trained to work together with the traffic police in reducing accidents. Meanwhile, Kentam Products Limited has supported police with reflective gear to increase visibility of their traffic wardens. Speaking after making the donation, Kentam Administrator Angela White said they value the work by the men in uniform. As Kentam, we realize that the police have a huge role in enhancing security. So we also realize that for them to enhance that security, they have a huge budget for them to be able to do it comfortably. So that's why we decided to come and help the little we can to help them to enhance this security. Kentam Products Limited is a pharmaceutical manufacturing company in Malawi. Malawi Gaming Board has warned against illegal gaming operations in the country. The board has warned it will forfeit gaming materials and arrest people involved in the malpractice. On Wednesday, officials from the board in a joint operation with the Malawi Police Service destroyed 11 gaming materials and about 1,600 tokens that were forfeited from two Mozambique, uh, rather Tanzanian nationals who were operating illegally. Patience Lunda has more from Zuzo. The two Tanzanian nationals were arrested in August 2020 for operating their gaming business illegally in Mzuzu City. Director of Legal Affairs, Ofwa Alide, said the board is responsible for assessing applications and issuing of licenses which comes with terms and conditions. They started without getting a license from the board because when you want to set up a gaming operation, you're supposed to approach the board. The board is supposed to assess your application and then where they deem fit, they're supposed to issue with the license and the license comes with conditions. Meanwhile, Malawi Police Service in charge for prosecutions 
registry, Solomon Mjawi, said the two Tanzanian officials revealed that the gaming machines belonged to another Tanzanian who at that material time was not in Malawi. Mjawi said the case is still in court. There was an undertaking from Council of Gambi that uh, he will bring the real accused person uh, to the police so that uh, he answers uh, the charges according to the gaming act. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, <clears throat> up to April this year, uh, Castro Ngambi was not coming forth with the accused persons. And uh, this actually prompted the police to take uh, the matter before uh, the court of law. And Every month, the gaming board takes 12.5% from gaming operators as levy. Chamber Foods Limited has urged consumers to take iodized salt as it is vital for good health. The company's general manager, Maskud Bora, made the remarks after adding another product on the market, which are 500 gram packs of salt. Bora said they have come up with smaller packs of 500 grams in order to make them affordable to more consumers, he explains. So as you know that we are catering the, basically the consumer goods and uh, this time we are launching salt to the market. As you have seen, this is a 500 gram pack. This is one kg pack. And basically, this is a, we are more concentrating on the consumer goods. And Sombe is a very strong brand. And that's why we are giving the kitchen salt to the consumers. Yeah, especially in the sense, you see, uh, uh, generally, salt is so important. We need it for our health also. For you need iodine for your health. Iodized salt is important. So this is a salt which everyone needs, all the people. Everyone, anybody cooks, they need salt. And we also it is a very cost effective. You can say it is come. It's a Botswana salt. It's a kitchen salt, and it is a good one, iodized, and uh, it is uh, uh, quite affordable. And finally, in international news, Kenya's Department of Gender says reported cases of gender-based violence have nearly quintupled during the COVID-19 pandemic. But campaigners note that stigma and fear of reporting abuse means the number of cases that go unreported is many times higher. Victoria Amunga reports for the VOA from Nairobi. Kenyan Jacqueline Karemi recalls the day in April when her partner of nearly a decade suddenly accused her of having an affair and then attacked her. <laughs> We wrestled. He was trying to strangle me and pull me back to the bedroom so that he could lock the door. But I managed to get out of the room. He wanted to push me off the fifth floor. I hit him. Then he started slashing my face and head with the Maasai sword. Karemi's was among more than 5,000 reported cases of gender-based violence in Kenya as emotional and work stress mounted during the COVID-19 pandemic. That's nearly five times the number of reported cases in 2019, according to an April survey by Kenya's Department of Gender. But Kenya's women rights campaigners note the vast majority of cases go unreported. Reporting will either cause shame, I'll fight with my parents, um, another thing could be that nobody will believe me because this person is a reputable, could be a chief, could be anybody. So this person is reputable in this area. So the, a lot of trust has uh, been lacked, especially with the reporting system, um, because people really, they, most of the victims believe they, won't, they are not going to be heard. To encourage gender-based violence survivors to speak out, Kenya's women rights defenders hold open forums. The reason why we are having this fellowship is to try to bring more women human rights defenders and activists and feminists that are able to talk against any form of violence against women and girls and any form of violence when it comes to human rights violation. Kenyan authorities are running a campaign called Komesha Dulma, meaning stop violence in Swahili. The goal is to stir the public to report cases of gender-based violence. But for us to achieve, even to start talking about it, to make it open, for people to come out, for women to come out, we have to have a holistic approach on how do we indeed deal with gender-based violence. Dealing with it is not uh, taking people to court alone or uh, fighting it the way we want to fight it. We have to go back even with the church because all of these people are people who are in who go to church, some of them who go to the mosque. 
As COVID-19 continues to batter families, gender-based violence survivors like Karemi can only hope more people speak out against what many now call a pandemic within a pandemic. Victoria Amunga for VOA News, Nairobi. And that item brings us to the end of the news tonight. But before we go, the headlines again. Parliament adopts a fuel importation report tabled by the Natural Resources Committee. Economists call for a budget that includes programs for the creation of one million jobs. And President Lazarus Tewera pledges commitment to ensuring stability in the Sadek region. You've been with me, Elita Soko. You can get more on these and other stories by visiting our website, www.times.mw. You may like our Facebook page, Times360 Malawi, and follow us on Twitter at Times360 Malawi. Now remember to wash your hands regularly, observe social and physical distance, and mask up. Please stay safe and have a lovely night.